Let's, uh, let's start off. I, I had these. Uh, can you get the, uncover that one over there? Good. That's the same as this that you have in front of you. I, uh, those of us who have been over there, certainly uh, I've been over there with uh, Senator Rounds and Senator Ernst, and, and uh, I'm sure some of the others on this platform have too. And we look and see what is the re we, we know the reason for this. We know that the, how aggressive China is in the South China Sea. Uh, we know the, uh, the, the, they have some seven outposts right now, uh, some 3,000 acres. Now, they could have put these things anywhere. I, I would always hasten to say it's illegal anyway because they don't own that property. But they could have put them anywhere, couldn't they? They uh, uh, have put them exactly where they are. And if you look at that chart there, look at the one in front of you, you have to wonder what, why they chose those particular areas. Now, your responsibility is to make sure that our sea lanes are not, uh, uh, are, are not going to present a problem in our being able to defend this country and uh, move our goods and services around. And so I'd like to have you look at that and look at the one in front of you and you kind of try to analyze where is this obstructing the things that we need the most? Why did they choose those particular areas? Have you, have you given any thought to that? Senator, we, uh, we clearly support a uh, free and prosperous Pacific and long term, we'd like nothing more than a military relationship that's transparent and based on non-aggression. But I think to your point exactly, we can't ignore that China's military growth and the use of their military to coerce their neighbors and to compete in a way that violates international norms and standards. And the, uh, what I would characterize as the unlawful growth of these platforms in the South China Sea is of great concern, I know, uh, for the national security apparatus and specifically for Admiral Davidson at indo -Pecom. Well, you know, it's uh, it, it, probably better than we do, but uh, over there we, and of course talking to Admiral Harris, and uh, it's almost as if they're preparing for World War III. And, uh, and, and it's having an effect on our allies over there because as we visit them, they're not sure <laughs> which side they're gonna be on. Uh, but the, because China is clearly making much more aggressive moves in that part of the of the world, and I just can't help but think that uh, it, it goes beyond just impairing our sea lands and creating problems for us. Senator, I agree with your assessment. I, I think what we see today is some pretty fierce competition below the threshold of open armed conflict. Yeah. Uh, we see it uh, in these kinds of areas. We see it in foreign investment. Uh, we see it uh, in infiltration through subcontractor networks. We see it in reconnaissance across our cyber networks, and it's of, uh, of great concern yeah. for all of us. Yeah, it is. Now, you mentioned in your opening statement uh, your, your friend, uh, General McDew. He was before this committee just uh, not long ago, and uh, it's really uh, kind of shocking to me uh, we went back and studied the history of all of the, uh, the flagged ships that we have had. Back in the 50s, we had uh, 1,288 U.S. flagged ships, 1,200. Now, that dropped down in the 1990s to 408. In 2013, there were 106, and today, 82. I mean, you know, uh, how, how serious is it? Did we have way too many in the beginning, or we just don't have enough now? Senator, it's a serious uh, concern. I think General McDude talked to you about whether we are a maritime nation or not a maritime nation. That's and right. He I know did. that uh, collectively we believe in this room we are a maritime nation and need to remain so. The U.S. flag fleet has dwindled over time. Um, and, and I certainly appreciate the Congress's support for programs like the Maritime Security Program that has retained that capability. But uh, without those kinds of programs, I'm not sure we'd have a maritime fleet underneath the U.S. flag for a very, uh, for a wide number of reasons. But this is concerning for our national defense because that not only offers capacity, it also provides the merchant mariners that sail our sea lift fleets uh, to deliver the surge fleet, and it also provides uh, global international networks that we use routinely uh, using these partners. 
Yeah, well, in his uh, testimony to us, he recommended a, uh, that we buy used uh, 24 additional uh, off, uh, um, uh, systems. Do you agree with that? Senator, I do. Yeah. I, I acknowledge the Navy has a plan to extend the service life of some vessels, to acquire used vessels, probably out of the MSC program, but acknowledged many of them have been built in foreign shipyards. And then ultimately, in the out years, procure a new, a new sea lift capability. But Senator, I appreciate your support on that because yeah. uh, the, that fleet is aging rapidly. And uh, most of that fleet, uh, about half that fleet, will age out by 2028. Yeah. Well, I, and I agree with that. Senator Reid. 